Hello, I am your host, Kathy Chester, and welcome to the Move It or Lose It podcast, a podcast about all things that move the mind, body, and soul. The Move It or Lose It podcast is for information, awareness, and inspirational purposes only. I am not a doctor, and I don't even play one on TV. So please consult with your doctor before making any medical decisions. The views expressed by advertisers, guests, or contributors are their opinions and not necessarily the views of the Move It or Lose It podcast. Hello, welcome to another uh, podcast with Move It or Lose It. Today, you have seen and you've heard me interview Dr. Ronnie Bannock, right? Yay. You got it. Okay. So one of my favorite guests that I've had on before, we've I really much enjoyed her. She got great reviews the last time. So back again, a neuro-optimologist, really important for us. As we know, lots of eye issues when we've got an autoimmune disease. So I've got three. So I've got some issues with my eyes. So very excited to have you on. Thank you so much, Dr. Ronnie, for being on with us. We really enjoy having you on. Thanks so much, Kathy. I really, really enjoyed our last conversation. I'm looking forward to today also. Yes. Lots to talk about today. You've got a lot going on. You've been very busy since last time we chatted. I so, have. I have a lot of projects in the works yes. that are finally coming to fulfillment. So um, yeah. the biggest news is that my book is coming out. Yes. Um, and so my book is on ocular nutrition. It's called Beyond Carrots, Best Foods for Eye Health A to Z. And um, I called it Beyond Carrots because everybody thinks you just need to eat carrots for your eyes. Right. But there's so much more we need to eat. So in the book, mm-hmm. I talk about all of that. Um, I yeah. break it down and yeah. And where do you, because I remember, I think that's such an old school thing, obviously. I remember my grandmother always telling me, eat your carrots, eat your carrots, eat your carrots. And I went through this phase and I don't know where it came from, where I went two years and I would literally have a bag of organic carrots. And I mean, I craved them from the morning I woke up till the end of the day. I just wanted, it got so bad. That's right. That I would have at least two to three, like small bags of them a day. Wow. And I was orange and I don't know what it was. It was like my body just wanted it. Like we talked before we started, like I wanted water. So I don't know where that came from, but my eyesight did not get better. (laughs) Yeah. So, so with carrots, I mean, carrots are helpful. Don't get yes. me wrong. It's not that you shouldn't eat carrots, right. but carrots provide mainly one nutrient our eyes need. They provide beta carotene, which is mm-hmm. basically a form of vitamin A, but our eyes need so much more than that because they're complex. They have mm-hmm. a lot of energy requirements. So we need to eat foods that are going to support our energy, um, you know, uh, organelles, which are, our, uh, which are our mitochondria. So we need um, lots of foods that will supply B vitamins and right. factors and minerals. And then we also need foods that will provide us with healthy fats, omega threes, right. that are also really important for vision health and brain health. And, um, and then finally, we need foods that are anti-inflammatory and antioxidants. So it's really the whole spectrum that we need. It's not mm-hmm. just one food, one nutrient that we need to focus on. It's the diversity of foods that we need. Um, and, and I, I love that you're talking about a lot that. Of, uh, maybe our, the older generations, our parents, yeah. our grandparents, they didn't quite understand that. And, sure. you know, the whole thing about carrots, it came about from a really interesting historical um, perspective. I can share it if, if anyone's yes. interested. So back in, uh, during World War II, um, the Germans were bombing England. And England developed this new technology, which was called, was radar, and the Germans didn't know about it. So Mm -hmm. England was able to spot the planes and shoot them down. And the Germans were like, how are they figuring out when our planes are coming in? So um, the English spread this, this myth that their pilots were eating carrots. And that's why their night vision was so good that they were (laughs) eating carrots. They could spot those planes and shoot them down when really it was like technology that they had. Interesting. It was allowing them to shoot those planes down. I did not know that. The whole world started eating carrots. Eating carrots. There was a huge (laughs) rise in carrot production. And then there was overproduction of carrots. So then people were making gotcha. carrot soup and carrot cake and carrot this and carrot that because there were just so many carrots. <laughs> right. That is so fun. I never heard that. That is that is really interesting. Yeah. yeah it's so a little that interesting is, historical tidbit. Yes. <laughs> that's, and I do think that we get into a habit of, you know, where I see this all the time, where we, we get something good for us. 
And then we assume that, okay, this is going to be the fix without realizing the other things we nutrients, the other things we need to add in as well. It's like, okay, I'm doing this really good thing. So then it allows me for then to cheat on these other things where it's like in my world, like, okay, I'm exercising. So why do I have to do, why do I have to eat well too? It's like, no, it all goes together. Yeah. And so you need, to, you need to support your body in all exactly. aspects. So like you said, food, water, exercise, um, stress reduction, yes. our, our mental state, you know, it all goes together. Right. Right. So moving from there, obviously the book is coming out and you're, the book is coming out when, when do you see it coming out? So it's out? coming out the week of April 10th. Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, hopefully by the time the podcast, the podcast is out, it will yes. be available and it's available on Amazon and for, uh, you can order it in a print version or Kindle version. So now do you think it will be on audio as well? Eventually, yes. Good. Eventually, because yes. so many of us that don't have great eyesight. I know with octave neuritis for me, this eye has been gone for a long time. So um, Audible has been a huge blessing for me. So um, I will look forward to that. And yes, um, that's that'll be works great as well. Yeah. So the, one of the other things I wanted to talk about are the five parts, the important takeaways from each part in, of, of optic neuritis. Speaking of going into optic neuritis, which is huge, especially in our the MS world. So, and we've talked, we touched on that last time that we talked about, you know, a lot of times when we're diagnosed and when I'm running the support group for, um, for some of the MS, especially for the women, there's not a big understanding. It's either you have optic neuritis or nothing. And so there's not an understanding of the, the different areas in our eyes that are affected. But speaking with the optic neuritis in your findings, the five parts and what are the important takeaways? So what, what do you mean by that? And what are you, what have you found with optic neuritis? Some of the new things that you found? Sure. So first of all, optic neuritis is very common in MS. Um, it's a presenting symptom in 30% of patients. So that's how some patients first get diagnosed with MS. Mm -hmm. And during the course, if someone has a diagnosis of MS, there is about 50% chance that they will have optic neuritis at some point. Um, in their life. Right. And so it's very common. And I think people, if we know my, my purpose with this series, that five part series was to really let people know, okay, what is it? What are right. the symptoms? What should you be watching out for? Um, what are the causes and what can you do about it? What can you expect in the future? So I think symptoms are really important. And I think if people are aware that, oh, there's something off with my eyes, maybe I should get it checked out make sure it's not optic neuritis. So yeah. the symptoms, first of all, pain. Mm -hmm. um, optic neuritis is typically painful and the pain tends to be worse if you move your eyes around. So if you're looking in different directions and you feel like a tightness yeah. in your eye socket or like a pulling sensation, mm -hmm. um, that could be an indicator of early optic neuritis. And then, then of course, a change in vision. Mm -hmm. And some people may lose their central vision, but other people may notice just a smudge in their peripheral vision. So it could be that they can still read okay, they can drive okay, but something is not quite right in the periphery. So if something like that happens, definitely get it checked out. Mm -hmm. um, and also loss of colors. This is really, yes. really important. If colors mm -hmm. don't look bright, if they right. look kind of dull or muted, that could be a symptom of optic neuritis. Mm -hmm. So if you have any of those symptoms, number one, go see either an ophthalmologist or if you can get in to see a neuro-ophthalmologist, see a neuro-ophthalmologist. Yeah. And then in this series, I talk about, so MS is not the only condition that can cause optic neuritis. There are other things that can cause it too. Mm -hmm. um, there are other inflammatory conditions. Like, I don't know if you've heard of NMO, mm -hmm. which is not MS, but it's like a cousin to MS. Mm -hmm. um, neuromyelitis optica is what NMO mm -hmm. stands for. That can cause optic neuritis. Um, something called MOGAD, M-O-G-A-D can also cause optic neuritis, which is also, again, not MS, but similar to MS. And then there are infections that can cause optic neuritis. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get it checked out because maybe it's not MS that's causing it. Maybe it's something else. And your doctor will order some testing for you. And then I talk about the treatment. So the treatment is typically steroids, but some people right. don't need steroids. Some people can heal on their own. So it's really something that should be tailored to you. You know, how the optic right. neuritis is affecting you. Have a discussion with your doctor. Is it necessary to take steroids? Can you let it play out on its own? Can you let your body heal itself? Or maybe you need some more advanced therapies for optic neuritis. 
And I also talk about the prognosis, which in most people, they have a really good prognosis with optic neuritis. Most people do recover uh, the majority of their vision. So I know it's really scary when it first happens because people can lose a tremendous amount of vision and they may not be able to function, but ultimately most people actually do quite well um, if they get it diagnosed and treated in Mm -hmm. in in a timely fashion. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. And I and I'm very, very I, I'm always very leery to tell other patients or ones that I work with mm-hmm. that mine has not gone away. And you know, I'm 25 years in and it went away uh, oddly enough for about five years. And I was like, woo, and then it came back. And oddly enough, it's always been there with the pain. So, you know, I'm just one of those rare cases. And back in the day when I had it, it was pumping steroids, pumping steroids in the IV, you know, the bag steroids. And so it was very harsh on my body. They're harsh on all my organs, my mouth, my jaw, my teeth, and all the things that they didn't, they didn't know back then that it was going to do to you later. And so I love that you're talking about other, other things to do, that there's other options than just the steroids. Had we known now had this happened, and it's so good for our newly diagnosed patients that may not have MS, but may, like we talked about, infections and things like that, it can be treated with other things if steroids don't do the trick or have such a, um, they were so harsh on my body, but that's what they had back then. So now to know that, that there are other options is so refreshing and really alleviates some of the fear in having optic neuritis, which my goodness, on I think I woke up on Mother's Day and couldn't see. And that is, like you said, it's a it's a fearful thing to think, is this it? Is this what I'm gonna live with forever? And so to have someone like you and have an, a neuro-optimologist, I think is really important. If you can and they you mostly time can find one in your area. Now at this point it does take some time to get in, but I think it's so, it's so crucial to find out to neuro ophthalmologist. Yeah. Well, first of all, Kathy, I really have to applaud you for sharing your story because um, it w- I'm sure you went through a very difficult time and it took a, a long time for you to, you know, feel comfortable and, and feel strong. And, and um, you know, back then, and um, 25 years ago, our understanding of optic neuritis was kind of at the the tip of the iceberg. Now we understand it so much better. Mm -hmm. We know what to look for. We know what tests to do. We know that, yes, steroids are, for many people, the first line option, but they're not the only option. And if someone can't take steroids, if they're having side effects, for example, Mm -hmm. um, steroids can cause a spike in blood sugar. For people who are diabetic or pre-diabetic, it may not be the best thing for them, or they can cause a rise in blood pressure. They can cause so many side effects. Sure. So there are other options now. There are other medications, other treatments. And then of course, the whole diet and lifestyle aspect, which really, I think really needs to be promoted in the community because I think most doctors are maybe not so aware of it, but there's a lot out For there. Sure. And there, there are doctors like Terry Walls. I don't know if you're aware yes, of Terry Yes, absolutely. Who but, isn't? Who is yeah, not aware of her? So much amazing work. Yes. Um, she's such a pioneer in yes. the use of diet lifestyle for inflammation, you know, whether it be yes. your eye, whether it be other parts of your brain or your spinal cord, For your sure. nervous system. So much people can do that are, that's in their control. Yes. I, mean, I can tell you, I had a patient who, um, she was really suffering. She had MS. She had seven uh-huh. bouts of optic neuritis, wow. seven times, Jeez. you know, it was one eye, then the other eye, then both mm-hmm. eyes. And, you know, I really said, and you know, what, thank you for saying that too. I just want to go back to that because a lot of patients don't know that it can go switch from eye to eye. So it thank can. you for saying that. Yeah, it can. And sometimes it's both eyes at the same time, which can really be right. I mean, if that happens, but again, the good news is that there are treatments. So, you know, I sat my patient down and I said, you know, think about what's going on in your life. You know, what are your triggers? Because Mm -hmm. she said, you know, Dr. Bannock, I'm so stressed. You know, I have this, you know, these issues going on with my family and my work. And, and so I said, okay, let's work on that. You know, yes, I can treat you for the vision. That's fine. We can get your vision sure. back, but let's work on your triggers. Let's find out, okay, where is it coming from? And what can you mm-hmm. do preventatively so your body doesn't go into this inflammatory state? And once she understood that, it almost like clicked. You yeah. know, she knew, okay, 
I can feel it. I can feel things in my body revving up. I can feel something going on. And I know what I need to do now to take myself out of that state. Yeah. And it was an, it was amazing. It was like, you know, she finally gained control of it mm-hmm. and now she's in such a better place Yeah, um, without those attacks, which can, again, and that's be key. so scary. And that was so wonderful. And again, it goes back to having a neuro ophthalmologist because you get that there's things that go along with it rather than an ophthalmologist may not understand the other things that, that can cause the, the, um, that can cause our eyes, that can cause the optic neuritis to flame up to, I know for myself having it for so long, I know that when I'm overly stressed, when I haven't had enough sleep, that all of a sudden my eye is just zoom, 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 that pulsating and I can feel it in other areas. So I know, okay, what's going on? What do I need to do? Do I need to have some relaxation time? And then I can feel it calm down. So again, just another reason it's so important to have a neuro ophthalmologist that can say, wait a minute, what's going on outside of just the eye pain or the, the eyesight? Absolutely. And I think what you mentioned is you really have to know your own body. You know mm-hmm. your body the best and you are your best advocate in terms of tracking what's going on. Sure. So keep a log, you know, you know, keep a diary of what you mm-hmm. think may be your triggers. Maybe it's a food, maybe it's like you said, stress or lack of sleep right. or um, maybe, you know, just things are too crazy at work and, and, you know, you're putting in too many hours or screen time, whatever it is, find out what your triggers are and then you're better equipped to deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the other things that um, we talked a little bit about that, but diet and how we talked about Terry Walls, what are some of the, I, we've got so many of the MS diets, we've got the Mediterranean and some of the other ones. So basically the biggest thing that you find are keeping us away from some of the things that cause um, that cause any, any swelling or any kind of inflammation. So really it's taking ourselves away from any inflammation foods. So from you, what do you see that are the biggest things that we really need to to keep away from? Yeah. So first of all, just, you know, you mentioned all the different diets out there. Um, I don't prescribe my patients a specific diet. What I do is I I have them take like a bird's eye view. Think about it from a really high level. Like how are you eating? What are the things you're eating? And what are the things that maybe you should remove from your diet? Mm -hmm. So it's not that you have to stick like precisely to, okay, I'm going to do this Mediterranean diet, or I'm going to do this paleo diet, or I'm going to do the walls protocol. Some of those diets, yes, they may work, but they're really hard to stick to. So take a bird's eye view. And the number one thing is you want to have a diet that's really rich in plants, Mm -hmm. a diversity of plants, because those plants will provide you with all the B vitamins you need, all the minerals you need, all the um, the micronutrients you need to keep inflammation at bay. That's the Mm -hmm. first thing. The second thing is you want to avoid foods that we call the SAD diet. I'm sure you've heard about this before, SAD stands for standard American diet. So you Mm -hmm. want to avoid processed foods. Ultra processed foods are really key. So if you look at the labels and there are all these ingredients, you just can't read, you can't pronounce them. That's probably a good indicator. (laughs) Maybe you shouldn't be eating that food. Try to move more towards natural foods, whole foods, foods that you can buy and you can cook or you can eat them raw, those types of foods rather than processed foods. You also want to stay away from unhealthy fats. And I'm sure many people have heard about omega-3s and omega-6s. We have both of them in our diet. What you want to do is you want to balance out. You want to keep the omega-6s, which are typically the unhealthy fats. Mm -hmm. You want to keep them low. So you want to stay away from things like saturated fats and too many animal fats. And you want to promote more omega-3s. So uh, foods like fish, like salmon, trout, sardines. You want to have also omega-3s from natural products like seeds, like um, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds. And you want to- Speak in my language. (laughs) What's that? I said, you're speaking my language. Exactly. Yeah. So you're already probably doing a lot of these, um, you know- But it's great because so many don't know that, right? I mean, so many- don't know that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the last thing is you want to stay away from too many sugary foods. Yes. Yes. There are lots of sugars 
that are hidden in our, in our foods, but read the labels and try to have more natural sugars. And mm -hmm. because natural sugars from let's say fruits, rather than eating cookies or cakes or pies, those natural sugars are better processed by your body. They also provide you fiber, which is really important for your gut health. So right. try to stick to those principles rather yeah. than, you know, following like strictly, I want to do this particular diet. You can do it for a week or two, but it's really hard to maintain that type right. of diet. So I realized like, this isn't going to air obviously right now, and we're going into a holiday weekend. So when it airs, it's not going to matter because people understand as you go into a holiday weekend or a holiday, it's always difficult as we know, because everybody wants to put out their, their best spread. And we know for us, that there's foods we need to stay away from. And it's always a tricky thing because you don't want to offend, you know, grandma or aunt Sue or whoever it is with their, their best food that they're bringing in. And you're looking at it like, I really want that, but I know if I eat that, that's going to really affect me. And so it's always that dance around, like not feeling strange and not offending, but really wanting to explain that I love what you made. I really truly do. And I really want to eat this. However, it's going to make my body really go into the space where I, I don't want it to go. So I'm going to either bring my stuff and this is for me so I can enjoy today and enjoy tomorrow as well and the next day without feeling terrible. So I really, truly enjoy everything you make. So it's always that dance around, that tiptoeing around, not offending, but really learning that that you are enough that you're, you've got to respect and love yourself enough to eat the foods that are best for you. And I know yeah. that's so difficult for so many. It is. I love how you put it though. You know, just, just explain that you're, you're not doing it to, you know, to say that you don't want their food, it's right? You're, you're doing it for your health. Right. And, you know, if hopefully they understand that. And um, also the fact that you're still present, that, right. that's a big, you know, um, uh, kind of a, you know, a way to still be part of the family or whatever gathering sure. it is, a holiday gathering, you're still present, but it's yeah. just that you're doing something a little bit different for your own needs. And I right. think most people will probably understand that. Um, and the other thing I just want to also mention is that, you know, going back to not sticking, you know, precisely to a diet, I always like to tell my patients, follow the 80, 20 rule. Mm -hmm. which is 80% of the time, you really try to eat as healthy as possible. Mm -hmm. And maybe that 20% of the time, you can allow yourself to have a treat to mm -hmm. really enjoy yourself, you know, um, you know, I don't want to say cheat on your diet, right. but just, you know, have something that maybe you wouldn't eat every single right. day. And if you allow yourself, you know, those little um, enjoyments, those little, right. um, you know, um, indulgences, yes. I think you'll be better off too, because then you won't feel deprived. Right. So, you know, maybe it is during those holiday times when you're out yeah. with family and friends that you, you do allow yourself that 20% of yeah. a little bit of, you know, slack, you give yourself a little bit of slack there. For sure. I agree. hundred percent. Well, I love that for sure. And so now I wanted to go on to another topic that you, that you, we talked about CGRP medications as it relates to migraines. We know that a lot of us, especially with autoimmune diseases, migraines are such a big part of what we struggle with daily. So explain to our listeners that have no idea what that is. What does that mean? So CGRP stands for, it's a big name calcitonin gene related peptide. So it's a, it's and a we molecule. will never remember that. <laughs> never so it's CGRP. Um so it's it's a molecule and it's a peptide, it's an amino acid that's involved in the pain pathway in migraine. And um you know over the past um 15 20 years mm -hmm. there really haven't been any specific drugs that have been developed for migraine. There are other drugs that are used for migraine but nothing migraine specific. Mm -hmm. CGRP medications are specific to migraine. And there's a lot of them out there now. There are seven of them out there now on the market. They're FDA approved and they're used to control not just, you know, periodic episodic migraine, but for people who really suffer from chronic migraine. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody who has migraine, maybe more than 15 days a month, which can really be debilitating. If you're having chronic migraine, have a discussion with, it, with your doctor, whether one of these CGRP medications may be right for you. Some of them are monthly injections, mm -hmm. self-injections. Some of them are uh, every three month infusions, and some of them are oral medications. So there's different methods and you know, different um, formulations. Um, I have to tell you that I have 
chronic migraine and I take a CGRP medication and it's changed my life. It well, really would has. one of those be, um, I hope I say this right, in, in Gality? Yes, and okay, so that's one what I have. That's one of the monthly one of ones. Okay. There's also a Jovi. There's mm-hmm. um, a Mavig. You probably see mm-hmm. the ads on TV yeah. all the time. There are all these uh, yes. celebrities now promoting these medications. Yeah. And the oral ones are Nurtec, ODT, or Ubrelv. Those are the two okay. oral ones that have been really promoted um, in the media. And they really can do wonders for people who have chronic migraine, but mm. they're not for everyone. Right. And also, if you do have another condition, like if you have MS or another autoimmune mm. condition, you may already be on another medication. So just make sure you have a discussion with your doctor about whether your current medication may interfere, whether CGRP sure. is safe for you or not. It's not safe for everyone. Right. So, um, But it has really turned around a lot of people's lives. It's definitely made my life so much better better in terms of managing my migraine. And I still do all my dietary intervention. I still do all the lifestyle and the supplements, but it's really a great way to put me in a different place so that my migraine threshold is higher. So I'm less likely to get a migraine. So instead of getting migraines like 15, 20 days a month, maybe now I have migraines only two days a month, which makes such a difference. Much more to a quality of life. Absolutely. Definitely. I agree with that hundred percent. So one of the things that I really appreciated is that one that you had introduced me to True Dark, which are glasses we talked about, you know, where you can order on Amazon for the for when you have a lot of screen time, which I'm sure you have to and I do with what I do. And so with having optic neuritis and the pain of that, I noticed that being on there for a while and then I just then a migraine begins. So I've used the True Dark and it's helped. Um, a lot. Do you still recommend TrueDoc or are there other companies that you recommend? <laughs> Excuse me. There's a lot of companies out there that make um, various tinted glasses. Um, so TrueDark is great because they have two different tints. They have a mm-hmm. lighter tint that they call, I think, the daylights. Mm-hmm. And they have the deep red tint, which is called the twilight. So if you're somebody who has light sensitivity, now, many people with MS are light sensitive. Many people with optic neuritis may be light sensitive, even outside of an attack. So you may want to consider those types of tints. Um, the other tint that can be really effective is an FL41 tint. Um, it's been clinically shown to help with light sensitivity, especially if people also have migraine. It's an FL. It's more of like a pinkish tint. It's like oh, a okay. rose color tint. And so there's a, com- a couple of companies that make that. Therospex is one of them. Avulux is one of them. Um, at, um, I'll put that at the bottom of the show notes. Yeah, there's a lot of different companies that make these tints. So again, there's the um, there's the blue blocking tint, which is either mm-hmm. yellow or red, and then mm-hmm. there's the FL41 tint, which is like a pinkish tint. So okay. you basically just have to try them on and see what you feel most comfortable with. And I actually have all three. And okay. depending on how much the light is bothering me in the day on that particular day, whether I'm having a migraine or not, I may choose a different tint for. Sure you know, the, the circumstance, uh, whether yeah. on a screen or not. The other thing I really love is an app that, um, I don't know if I shared this with you last time. It's called Iris. I oh, R- no. S. Okay. And it's an app that you can, it's like a software that you can download to your phone or to your tablet or to your computer. Mm-hmm. And internally it takes out the blue block, the blue wavelengths that can trigger light sensitivity. And it also takes out the flicker rate from the screen. So all of our screens flicker and Uh that can trigger light sensitivity so that Mm -hmm. that software is great because it can do those two things. And I think it's a free trial. I can can, um, send send you the the link in case you wanted to include it in the show notes. Yes, Um, It's a free trial. And I think it's like, it's really inexpensive. I think it's like $14 for a, a license, a lifetime license. Okay. That's great. Because there's so many things that I did get true dark after we talked and the daytime ones are great. The nighttime ones are a little funky when I have to drive because you can see the road, but nothing else. So you go to look at yeah, something I else. I'm like, maybe, what? <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe try the lighter tint for driving. But yeah. like if you're indoors, I think the darker tint is fine. But if you're like, if you have to do something where right. you need to see a distance, it's probably not the best. Yeah. yeah. But it has been great. Cause I don't know. I, I think most of us who have, you know, eye issues just trying to be even in the car, if I'm not driving just the light, especially if it's raining or something like that, it's just excruciating on the eyes. So I think having the glasses and I, I believe that we all kind of fell for like the Amazon, you know, blue, the glasses that would help screen time. And you put them on, it's like, this isn't doing anything. 
So I so appreciated your knowledge in that to find glasses that made a difference. And as soon as I got them and I had, you know, realized that, okay, these are not, they, there's a little yellow or pink tint. It helped yeah. a great deal. So yeah. I really so the, the tint is important. So, yes. you know, a lot of the ones that you find on Amazon, they look clear, they look like mm -hmm. regular glasses, but all they do is they basically reflect the light. So they have like a reflective coating on it. So it's just bouncing the light off, but it doesn't actually block the light internally. So that's why the tint is important. It's important to have a, some kind of tint. Um, the ones that reflect probably only block about 15 to 20% of the blue light versus right. the tinted ones can block 50% or more. So um, if you need a little bit of extra, you know, um, yes. protection, I would stick with the tinted ones. Which is so important. So it's, I'm so grateful that you gave us that information and that we were able to put that on. I know a lot of people purchase those. So yeah, and we're so very glad happy. I'm so you. Yes. Yeah, I love very my much so. I'm glad yeah. you did very much. So the book coming out, very excited about that. I can't wait to see that. And as far as, um, as far as the other things coming up, the eye health, we talked about that. Anything else that you did the five part series, which is great. And, um, where can they, where can they see that? Where did you do the five part series? Where can they, so where can they see that? on Instagram. Um, okay. Instagram is my, I, I'm on various different social media. Oh, I see you all the that's, time. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much my main channel, but I'm also on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so you can find a lot of great information there. Um, but Instagram is where I'm most active. And then if anyone's interested in in, um, so I have a book coming out. I also yes. have a supplement line that's coming out. You do. For eye health. Yeah, awesome. So it's called Ageless by Dr. Ronnie. Because okay. Because we all want to have ageless eyes. Of course. And um, so I have supplements for general eye health, like a multivitamin with specific ingredients to support your eyes. Mm -hmm. I have something for macular degeneration and blue light. I also have something for omegas, like a, a full spectrum omega. Okay. If you're looking for that. And then I have something for migraine too. So um, that'll be launching probably at the end of April. That's um, wonderful. And I can definitely share that with you. If anyone's yes. interested in uh, specific formulations for their eyes, then that's wonderful. I have I'm so excited. Need, so yeah. Thank okay. You. So that'll yeah. be coming out the end of April. So I definitely, and I'll highlight that when it's, when it's coming out. So I want, definitely want the notes for that and we'll definitely promote that. So oh, thank you. I want that for sure. Um, yeah, we'll definitely have to collaborate on that because I want to be able to highlight that and promote that for you. Um, very excited about that. Really excited. That is something that I know so many of us need. So that's wonderful. So anything yeah, else that you're excited about? You've else? got so oh much going on. So, there's, there's so much going on. Oh, so with the book, um, yeah. I also have a cookbook and that's already, actually it's already up on Amazon. Oh, it is. Okay. And it's called the Beyond Carrots Cookbook. So basically okay. I take all the principles from the book and then I share lots of recipes, um, simple things, like yeah. really simple things you can make that will include those foods, those nutrients that are in the book. So that's already available. It's called the Beyond Carrots Cookbook. It's already on Amazon. On. Love that. And I have a vegan and vegetarian version too for anyone. That's so good vegetarian. to know. All right. I'm going to order mine today. So don't pull over. You guys, I'll have it on the bottom of the show notes. You guys can get that. That's so good to know. I love that. I'm going to go ahead and order that. So okay. that is Thank really you. exciting. Thank so you so I'm much so, for all your support. Are you kidding? I, I, I love it. I love it. your message. I love <laughs> what you know that we're you put out so much positivity, so much hope for people and you're doing amazing work. So thank, thank you. you. For everything Back at doing. you. <laughs> well, it's again, been wonderful to have you on and spreading your awareness. I can't wait to read the new book. And when it comes on, well, my husband's going to have to read it until it comes on for me on Audible, but um, it's been so great to have you on. I so enjoy having you and all the knowledge that you have and all the work that you're doing for us and helping us to be able to see and to be able to have a life more comfortable because we all know that wanting to be able to see the beauty and not being able to see it is so, it's, it just takes so much out of us. It takes so much joy out of us and being able to talk to you and see you. And again, just where are you located for patients that would want to come and see you? I'm in New York City, so I'm yes. in Manhattan. And um, for people, are you who, accepting new patients? I am, yeah. Okay. And also, I do, do offer telemedicine consults. So okay. If you're interested in that, you can contact my office. Great. Okay. Well, again, I hope that you guys are able to contact Dr. Rainey. If you are in New York, go ahead and make sure that you make an appointment. And for all of you, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. I very much enjoyed it. 
And we hope to contact and have her back again once this book is is already out. And we can't wait to get this cookbook and also um, all the new things that are coming out with you. Very exciting. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Dr. Bannock, for being on with us again. Thank can't you wait to so have you much. back it on. It was really a pleasure. All really right, guys. Well, have a great day and we'll see you back next week. Bye-bye, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Move It or Lose It podcast, where you can again find us wherever you like your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, join us on that. And we can't wait to see you again. We're going to have a lot of exciting guests and working together. And as always, you'll hear us say at the end of every podcast, we are stronger together. So let's do it. Let's become stronger together. Have a great day. Hey.